Hey, Dave LaCalle with Head Games Motorworks. Today I have something special for you. I'm going to show you what grinders I use, what burrs I use, and what do I use them for. How to set a head up, checking out protection, basically all the basics that you need to know to start grinding. Check it out. So this is going to be a short series that we're going to do where I'm going to show you some porting techniques. Is it going to be consistent? No, it's not going to be consistent. But if you subscribe to our channel, you'll be sure to find when we do post these. We're going to go over some techniques, how I use the grinders, how I use the burrs to make certain shapes. We're not going to go too technical, but I assure you that you will get something out of it. If you're this guy, stop being this guy. This tool is not made to port cylinder heads. A, you really can't put enough pressure on it to move material, and it honestly just doesn't run fast enough. A maximum 2000 RPM is all you're gonna get out of a drill, and it's just not gonna work for porting a cylinder head, and the burr itself is not made to work at 2000 RPM. It is a 20,000 or 15,000 RPM tool, so when you go with 2000 RPM, you're really just kind of tickling it. It's not gonna take material away. If you really wanna remove some meat, you're gonna get one of these. This is a Makita GDO 603 grinder. It is a bad dude. Check this out. I like this grinder because I can run this thing at 28,000 RPM, which is it's at max, and I can run a full six inch long this is the Head Games three quarter super spiral burr. I can run it full length at full speed and it still runs consistent. Um, that is something that you don't get in every grinder. Some grinders will bend this right away. Uh, we'll get into that more later. But these having this kind of length to it and being able to get into spaces that are very far away is instrumental in getting a lot of things that you're not gonna be able to grind otherwise. Comparatively speaking, this is another Makita grinder. Uh, I don't know, this is the GDO 601. Total pile of crap. This thing will bend a burr faster than you can say bend because uh, I don't really know why. I don't know why Makita went from this to this and they make both and this one sucks. Like I would just don't get this one. It's really heavy. It's hard to, to hold all day if you're gonna hold it. I do like the length, but I don't like anything else about it, and you have to run a very small burr. Whenever we're talking about an electric grinder, it's really important to make sure that you get a speed control. Speed control helps you do many different things. So I will rough a burr in at high speed or even full blast. You can also pull here, you can go full blast. I do variable, and then I will fine grind it. I'll bring it down to the medium or right in the middle, and then you can make your nice grinding marks. I don't only use electric, I also use air. Now this is a Clico, uh, the model number is really freaking long there. The G, uh, 216 GLFB-250-C4. Now this is a front exhaust grinder. So that means that the air comes out of here instead of the backside like a lot of the grinders do. Uh, it has a nice weight to it, it has a ton of torque. This thing would bring down a house. And uh, this is also a situation where you can't run a full length burr because it will bend it. It has, so, as I said, so much torque. I mainly use this for sanding. I don't really grind with it anymore. I use the Makita electric grinder for most of my grinding. And then I switch over to this for the sanding because I'm gonna blow all of the the sanding bits or the, the uh, any of the metal, I'm gonna blow it all out to port. So same scenario as the electric, you wanna have some kind of speed control. Um, I use a sue here and then you can go up or down. And uh, this is a, a very important tool because you don't wanna run everything right off, off the blast because, well, it's gonna be a lot of air. 
Now this grinder is pretty expensive. I will show you, uh, I'll put a picture up of it for you. Uh, it's like 650 bucks. It's not the cheapest thing. It is one of the best grinders. It's an industrial grinder um, and it uses a lot of air. So you can't have like a normal air compressor and use this thing. You will need a big air compressor. You can actually find this uh, grinder. Uh, you can go online and uh, Home Depot sells it. It's like 130 bucks. I usually buy a couple of them because I uh, break the nose a lot. Um, you can see this one's kind of, well, I probably go about two a year, uh, but I probably pour maybe, I don't know, uh, 60 or 70 heads a year, uh, at least in here because most of our stuff CNC now, but you can buy that anywhere. There's many different shapes and sizes of burrs that I use during the times. Uh, depends on what I'm grinding on, what shape I'm trying to make. Uh, there's different lengths for different uh, how hard I'm going to be pushing on the burr. So here's a take a look of what, what we use. First, I'm going to show you the difference between the Head Games burr and what other people sell. So this is a Head Games. Uh, this is actually a high helix. It's not our super spiral burr. I could show you that again. But uh, so if you look at the shape and the amount of cuts, uh, the way that it it spirals compared to this guy the difference will be that this guy will leave big chips which means that it's going to be harder for you to sand whereas this will hog material and it'll leave it very very fine and you can even slow it down uh, as i showed you on the electric grinder you can slow it down and make it even nicer so a quick introduction to our burrs uh, these are the burrs that we use on a daily basis uh, some of these are just to show you like this one and this one but this is the head games three-quarter super spiral burr say if i'm going to do a big block chevrolet or if i were to do a subaru this is the burr i would use or pretty much actually any port that has some kind of circular shape to it because it's already circular it will really lend it itself to be able to make the shape very fast easy and consistently uh, this one right here this is our 5 8 this is a high helix not the super spiral we left this in a high helix because well the thing just works and we didn't want to change it um, this is a, uh, a kind of a mid-grade burr like you can use it for almost anything um, this burr is our half inch super spiral burr and this one also you can pretty much use this on everything these are made for steel so these are a double cut burr and this is a three ace it's three ace so these burrs are really for blending i know a lot of guys try to use these type of burrs and they're trying to pour it with it but if you're trying to pour aluminum with a double cut burr you're going to have a really hard time because it's not meant to do aluminum it's meant to do a steel and it's not meant to take a lot of material out. And these are just for show. This is a tree. I use sometimes that for deburring. And uh, this is also one that I use for blending in a valve job because it's a steel seat. One thing you'll notice is that each one of these is a different length. Why is it a different length? Well, it depends on what I'm grinding on, but I really push on this one or it's I'm taking out so much material, there's gonna be a lot of flex, so I cut it short. We sell these in a six inch length, but just remember that you should cut it down to your grinder or whatever you're gonna use it on and not just leave it at six inch because we sell it at six inch. Let's talk protection. Now I've used these glasses before uh, with grinding and the issue I have with these is when you put them on that they're still ways for the metal to go underneath or below or around especially if something's blowing at you i've had to pick steel out of my eye with a business card using one of these uh, so i no longer use a safety glass so what i do is this is something i picked up when i worked at pat Musi's, is a full face shield full face shield means that you're going to have this area here it's going to go over your head Right, so any metal will go in your hair and you have a full face shield around your face. So you're pretty much protected in every avenue and you can walk out and not have to worry about COVID. 
Y'all ready to grind. Now, what is left? The only thing that's left really is setting the cylinder head up so you can successfully grind on it. Now, I see guys putting the cylinder head in really awkward positions and they grind in awkward positions. I would say bring the work to you. And if you can't naturally make a shape, right, with your hands, then you're putting the head in the wrong direction. This is an example if you're gonna port the the floor and the walls, I would prop it up something like this. We have a little, you can buy these things at Goodson. I know they're all over online. I replaced the rubber covering that they give you with some, uh, well, it's a little high, heavier plastic covering because we beat the shit out of these things. So I want to make sure that it's good. Uh, we put a light underneath of it and put this here. This way you're porting the, the floor and you'd be porting the walls and you're not porting up here because that would be unnatural. You're only porting this area here and that way you're good to go. All right, so then easy peasy, flip it over, flip it around, put your light on. And now you're porting the roof of the port. See, easy peasy. If I was porting short turns, I would set it up like this. I put a light, you could put the light under here, nothing fancy, and now you're porting short turns. I did see somebody online trying to port their short turns like this the other day, and let me tell you, you are not going to make a good shape this way because you can't see it. You can't see it, you can't do it. And it's unnatural for your body to make this kind of shape in that section. This should be the bowls. This is the bowl area, you would put it down, and now you're looking at it. Make sure you're comfortable when you're porting a cylinder head. If you feel any uncomfort, if you feel like you have to push a certain way and your body doesn't normally turn that way, just don't do it. Stop right there. Don't use a, a drill. Like that is just total insanity to me. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to be more to this series. I'm going to actually show you how to make some shapes using our burrs. And, our, and the grinders I depicted here. And uh, stay tuned. Toodles.